Hello everyone. Welcome to the project The Chef. Now let us discuss about the problem statement of this project. Staying healthy is more important in this modern era with many environmental and health related issues. So cooking in our home is the right choice. So this web application let us search the ingredients that are readily available in our home and retrieve the recipes from the YouTube top search results. So whenever you have good recipe like I mean you have ingredients in your home but don't know what to cook. So you will be searching in YouTube right. So we will make the work easier by giving the top search results with combination of different ingredients in your home by using permutations and combinations in Python. So now let us see the tech stack involved in this project. In this project we are going to use Django, Python and some YouTube search APIs. Now you can see some sample input and outputs. So at the left side that is the interface of this application. So user can give the ingredients that are available in our, his home and he can click small, medium, large recipes. So partic like it divides the categories into small, medium, large so that whenever user gives uh, like minimum recipes, the user can get the very quick recipes in very less time and you can also get large recipes which take more time with different combination of ingredients. On the right side you can see outputs with the ingredients that are be going to use in the YouTube URL that you are going to see and like it is categorized in a, in a well manner so you can see first as large recipes, quick recipes and medium recipes. So thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to the project The Chef. So we will be dividing into two stages. At the first stage we will be discussing about Django and we will write a sample program to render a text in the browser. And then in the second stage we will write the code for the core part of the project. So let's get started. Now let us start this project by creating a folder for it. So to create a folder enter mkdir and the folder name. In my case I will be naming it as the chef and later click I mean write cd the chef so we will be going inside the folder now install the django for the project now as we have installed the django now let us start a project in our folder which we have created so to create a project we need to write django admin start project so this will help us to create a project. Now to name the project, we'll also name the project name as the chef. And hit enter. Now you can see that we'll be creating a folder in our directory. So now let us check whether it has been created or not. Now you can see that it has been created a folder named the chef and some files have been uh, installed too. So let us see what are this files contains. So let's start by seeing what is in settings.py. Now you can see that there are many, I mean, like debug, allowed host. So let us see what is this. So what is debug? Debug is basically whenever we are writing our code in our local host, we will be facing few few issues or few errors in our code. So debug making true will help us to see where the code went wrong. And now let us see what is allowed host. So whenever we'll deploy our application in production, we need to allow the host to deploy us. I mean deploy the project. So we'll be writing it as star when 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 it is in deployment. Later you can see here, I mean uh, in templates, in templates dictionary you can see a file name dirs and some empty list. So what is dir is basically in this, uh, pr I mean in this Django architecture we will be using templates. So while creating a template, we need to show where is the templates folder in our Django project. So we need to write the templates folder path in this DIRs dictionary key, key as a value pair for the DIRs. Now you can see that this is the VSG application we'll be again using in deployment of this project. And databases is used for while we are like using the database, we need all we, we need we need to also give the path for the database. And that end you can see that static URL. So whenever we are using any media content or any images or videos which we which we are processing inside the 
Django, we need to pass the media content. So basically, whenever it encounters a media file, we need to give the path from where it arrived. So Django needs everything to be set up in the settings.py. So this is about settings.py. Now let us see what is URLs. So before seeing URLs, let us know about more about Django. So basically, Django follows MVT architecture. So let us see with a flowchart about it. Now let us see the outline about MVT architecture that is well known as models, views and templates. So whenever user tries to fetch data or give some input to the website, what does the Django do? Django sends the request to the URLs. So URLs maps the request to the views and search for the function in the views. And views will use the models and templates to get the data and show the feed for the user. So the re triangular relation between models, views and templates is known as MVT. And in the template section, we will be using HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But we will be also using DTL that is known as Django template language. So we can also write our Python logics inside the HTML files. Now that we understood the architecture behind Django that is MVT. So if you see our start project folder, we have only URLs. So we need to add views.py and we need to create templates folder so that whenever URLs are, I mean, whenever we wrote a function in views.py, it should be mapped to URLs so that whenever user sends a request, it will be rightly mapped. So let us start by creating a views.py in our, in our folder. So let us add a file, name it as views. And we have created the views. And now let us see what is WSGI. So while in deployment, we will be using this WSGI for the deployment of our, about this project. Now at the last, we can see manage.py. So what is this? Basically, we will be running our server. So to run the server, it need, it takes care about it. So let us run the server. So to run the server, we need to use python manage.py run server. This is the command we will be going to use. Now let us run the server. That is basically python manage.py run server. So hit enter and you can see it is going to run that command going to give our local host address and we are going to see the browser. Now you can see that it said uh, mean a start deployment server at our local machine address. So if you click on this you will be accessing our Django server. You can see that it gave the output as a Django start boot server. So as it is initially it is going to give us so we will be modifying this and will render some sample text. So to close server, we will be using control C so that it will close the server. Now let us render some sample text in the browser. So, so to do that, now let us create the view as we have created views.py. Now let us create the templates folder. So to create templates folder, we will be creating a folder named templates. We will name it as templates and we'll, the important thing that to be noted is we need to only name it as template so that the Django can recognize. And after that, let us create a file name index.html. So we will be using this index.html to render the sample. So after you are landed at the index.html, we will be creating a sample doc so that whenever user clicks on it, it will be rendering hello. So if you are using Visual Studio, click, I mean, write uh, explanatory mark and enter. So you can generate an automated code. So let us write hello here and save this. Now let us again go to views.py and let us import a model from Django dot HTTP port HTTP response. Now again let us import from Django dot shortcuts port render. So we will be using render so that whenever we write, whenever the function will be triggered, so uh, it will be it will be going to re request and we will be rendering the index.html. So that's the reason we'll use the render. So now let us write a sample function and name it as def index. 
and request so if it if the request is a parameter is going to be triggered now let us write return and uh, and we should give as a response right so response the index dot ht so what basically is it like we are going to write render so we need to give the response and the index dot html or you can also write even request here now let us write this function inside the url so that urls can map it correctly now let us update the urls.py as we have wrote a new function in use.py that is in so we will be importing from dot import views so what basically it does is it makes easy to import the functions which are available in views.py so if you write views.index it can be accessible now let us write now let us see how to write the path i mean the paths like the functions which are available in views.py which to be mapped correctly so to do that we will be writing path views dot index and after this we will be writing name as a parameter and we will be keeping as so now that you can see that views dot index is easily accessible to the urls now before running the server let us update the settings dot py by adding templates in the dirs as we are using templates as we have created a folder templates we, we need to access that we django need to access the index dot html to render the output so in the templates we'll write templates as the parameter so it can directly map it now let us run the server so to run the server we'll be using python manage run server let's see the output you can see that the server started and let us see the output you can also see that it gave the output as hello now let us write the python application logic for this project so let's start by importing the required modules for this application so let us import the ita tools and the youtube search so basically we are going to search the uh, i mean recipes in the youtube at the top field so we need a, a youtube search api so that it can search the results for us and give as the like it can also give the how many results we want right so now let us write the code to fetch the data from the YouTube. So like for a particular query, we can get the results and number of results. And we can even convert the results to JSON or we can convert to dictionary. So as we are using Python, we will be converting to dictionary. So let us write the code for it. So let us give a variable called res and write YouTube search. Now there will be, a, there will be a two parameters. One is query and next one is max results so basically the the like what is the, what is the use of query is basically we need to pass the question through the res right so youtube search needs the query and the max room results so it we can give any number so let us go with for now five five results and let us convert the output to dictionary so when the when, like whenever this youtube search api gives the query and the max results equal to five so it is going to fetch five results from the youtube search with few keys and values that i'm going to show as the output to form of dictionary so we need to now pass a variable for query right so let us declare a variable for query and let us give the for example as we are dealing with recipes let us give carrot so now let us run this now run the modules now let us run this res and let us print the res now oh yeah you can see that it gave a list of item, like i mean outputs right so let us print by one by one so to get more clarity or we can analyze the what are the outputs given so for i in e res so basically if we use for i in res we can access the every dictionary in the array so basically the output is going to be a array of dictionaries so you print array you can access individual individual dictionary now you can see that it gave five results as we requested five results it gave five results right now 
can see that it gave id it gave thumb lines your know, thumb lines right the front image of the youtube like i mean before viewing the like video you can see the thumb line of a video and you can also see it gave a title so this is a bit important for us like on what basis we are going to take the query or not see yeah so now you can see that it also given long dsc so basically it gives a description of this video and from which which channel like who posted this video and how much duration and how many views you got this video so yeah so this is the url suffix so the most important things which we, which we are going to use from the results which uh, youtube search give are like well, is basically uh, a fix but before that let us print the keys so keys are the ones which have the values right dictionary is basically key value pair so this is keys and this is value so there can be many keys. like I mean, what happens in dictionaries we can have different keys but i mean sorry different values but unique keys so it's like if you uh, if you imagine a lock you can have different types of locks but only you have one key for the correct right so it's like a lock which we use daily so basically keys should be unique and values should be different or it can be same so let us print i dot so that we can know that uh, what are the outputs that we are going to get in a better manner now i can see that it gave ids thumb lines title long ds i mean description channel duration and views and url suffix so now our part is to take the ones which are useful for our website so that the user can be benefited now the as you can see that we can't do anything with this id right so we will be removing this id and we doesn't want thumb line no title no i think the best thing we will be using url suffix so now you can understand that in this whole output only one key is useful right so let us write a code which can remove all the i mean all the all the keys except one key so we'll be using a for loop for that so now let us write the code for it so basically let us initialize an array which contains the outputs which are not needed so basically the outputs that are not needed are except views right so let us copy from the keys let us paste it here and like this now we need all i mean we need only key which is not there in the re right so basically we'll use a for loop for i in res so res has the outputs right all the i mean this all outputs are from res variable right now for i in res we will be using l equals to this is known as if you write an operation inside an array i mean if you this is standard array right so this is known as list comprehension so it is an advanced process of removing keys or appending elements like that so for i dot pop key so basically what is happening here is so re is the keys which we don't want so for key in re i dot pop key so pop will remove each element from the ending of an array but each appending of an element here it is going to remove here so i'll show you the process so basically what happens in every i mean in at every iteration we are going to remove id thumb lines everything from the res as we are doing in res so we print only now res the modified res will be now you can see that it gave outputs only as url suffix right so we have successfully eliminated all the keys except the url suffix that is the important one now you can see that it gave only suffix so you need to concat at every iteration www.youtube.com so what basically happens in a youtube video is so whenever if you see a youtube video it gives the, i mean at the end suffix will be changing every time but the youtube will be same so if you see any google like it's common for any website right so the I mean prefix will be the same but the suffix will be changing at every time so let us add one more thing so that whenever we are uh, i mean cop like printing the res we can get with the suffix i mean with the prefix and suffix so it will be easy for us like i mean we can easily print i mean go to the video directly right so let us see how to add that so we'll be using i equals to i plus 
youtube.com so what i am doing is like at every iteration i will be after this i mean after this operation only i will be having a url suffix so at every iteration if we do that we will be getting uh, i mean youtube prefix will be attached to the url suffix so to do that we'll be using concatenation so if you do this what happens it will be i pin i mean i is a variable which has the dictionary whole dictionary but we only want to apply for the url suffix right so let us write now url suffix so i of url suffix will has the content of this suffix so if we i mean do concat to the youtube.com we'll get the output so i of url is equals to youtube.com plus i of again url suffix so basically we are just appending the i, I mean you new item to the old uh, items like that's what we are going to do here so before running this we need to run the res again because we have modified the res and removed all keys right so it faces issues again if you run this now let us again now run this command now you can get youtube.com and url suffix yeah it it has been applied so you can see now youtube.com slash or i mean the suffix right so now you can easily go to this website and you can view the video so this is what like the first part like how to fetch the results from the youtube now as we told you before like we are in this project we are going to do for three recipes right so one is small large and medium so in the small recipes we are going to you like i mean user will give a different types of ingredients right so we can't search only carrot in the youtube search query right here so now we will be creating a base so what is a will be i mean we will be creating a base variable which holds the value like uh, the recipe with using yeah like this so what happens here is if we concat base plus query so at every iteration we can just pass query and let us concat base to query so what happens the queue i mean the recipe for carrot so it will be going to youtube search api and is going to fetch the results so the recipe for plus carrot so it is best it is only going to be concatenation at every time the reason i didn't wrote the recipe for carrot is what happens when we do for medium and large recipes is we will be dealing with multiple ingredients so that's the reason that's the reason i didn't use so we'll also include another one basically the recipes for only so what the the reason i kept again only is to confirm that whether we only want to cook particular recipe so if you mention only the results can be more vital i mean it, it that is the sole part of this project right so that's the reason i am using the recipe only so that is the reason now at every iteration we are going to concat with query so now let us write functions let us write three functions for mean i mean generating the recipes and let us limit the max results to one so because while we are dealing if we give five or six it is being like more uh, i mean more information to the user so he feels difficult like what these many recipes like so let us give the top result and it, he may conclude like it is best result like that so let us write the function for small recipes first as we are done with small there will be a small modification for medium and large the reason is in the small we are only going to calculate i mean the top result for one ingredient if you see for small we are individually calculating for bread and butter not like bread and bread butter so small recipe says that we are going to use less ingredients like i mean individual ingredient now let us in case of medium we will be getting few combinations so what is how can we generate combinations so what is a combination basically for example if you give you an array of 1 2 3 now it this is an array so if you want to generate different combinations with this array let us see what can we do that is one i mean you can see one one now you can see two two three three and what is the next thing you can say one two one three and two one two three so what happens here we can generate few different combinations from the 
given array so that is the what we are going to divide i mean do in the medium in medium we are going to concat two ingredients and we are going to fetch results so let us jump to the code of the medium so as simple will be and again con i mean let us again declare a variable and let us give three recipes this time bread butter and jam so again we have given three uh, ingredients now let us convert into an array right so a dot split and now this time as you know before like we are going to again use comma separated so at every encounter of comma it divides into an array and which will be going to store in s now we are again going to call the search but the modification that we are going to do in this thing is i mean in this phase is basically now let us initialize a variable called s1 so in the s1 let us use the iterations and combinations that we have declared before you can see at the beginning i have imported iter tools so what iter tools and combination does is as you can see as i have explained if we give one two three we can generate n number of combinations like it is basically three factorial so what it can generate n factorial times of uh, I, I, I mean combinations so if you give three th i mean three three elements it can generate six different combinations so we are going to use combinations here combinations is the model that is given by python to generate different types of combinations so now let us do combinations and now in medium we are going to give only two so we are only going to combine two different ingredients to generate a recipe so in this case we are only going to use one i mean two sorry now again we'll be using a for loop right for i in in this time the change is s1 because of the different combination now the reason i didn't use here length is because at every iteration we are going to get different combinations right and you can also see that i, I didn't use query and base until now now let us write that query will be base plus space plus s1 of i you can see that what happens is s1 has the value of okay before that let us print s1 for better understand now if you give s1 now you can see that we got three different combinations the reason uh, i told you six but you got three you may confuse right so what happens here is when you are generating n factorial times you make it unique so what do you mean by unique so if in case if you add 1 2 and 2 1 so 1 2 is also same as 2 1 right so that we'll be getting three different i mean three same values in the six generated one so it is only give us it it will only result as the unique ones so that's the reason we use the combinations and please see the syntax we'll be using list of combinations of s comma 2 so this is how you print the values now let us convert i mean let us still add the features that i've discussed before now let us loop it for i in s1 now the thing is we'll be initializing a variable called query and as i told you before base contains i mean the standard i mean which contains the base text plus now here we are going to use s1 of i so at every iteration we are going to get a new thing i mean in first iteration we are going to get bread butter like that now as we are done now let us pass this query to the search function that we have declared before now let us install a variable called url and let us say search of s i mean uh, sorry query so at every iteration query will be different and at every iteration search will be giving a top results for the particular one now let us print url now you can see an error causing that list must be integers or slices not tuples the reason we got this because combinations will result as a tuple of arrays if you see before i have printed the results like it will be bread butter as a tuple so 
that is the reason we got a wrong so to overcome that we will be using i of 0 so at i, I of 0 to position we are going to have bread and i of first position we are going to have butter so this is how you divide i mean argumentation the given variable i mean you get a list of tuples you need to convert each one to an string so now let us add and so it will be good for the top results like it can increase the percentage of getting better results and now let us give i of 1 so at a 0th position we are going to get this and i of 1 we are going to get butter now again print the output you will get the output so that you can see that you as i told you you will get the output so now also you got three results but these three results include two different combinations of recipes so this is how you do for medium recipes now let us convert this to a function so it will be again useful for the views.py so again let us pass the query and what happened here is basically a equals to like this now let us modify few things at i mean we will be not having this bread butter jam inside the medium right now let us do i mean uh, at be, be in place of a we will be placing query so whenever query gives us it sends to this and we are going to convert that i mean it can it, it will be converted to a list and like that now in place of query again let us write query m more like we can say that it's modified query now let us run this so the function will work now let us pass an uh, i mean a result so that we can get the outputs so medium of bread butter and jam and let us print this sorry yeah now let us print this now you can see that we got the outputs so again we have converted to this function right so let us store this again to the top set So let us store this here this cell has all the small medium recipes now the only thing left is large so while we are dealing with large with there will be few conditions and thresholds so what happens whenever user gives three recipes and has for a large recipe there will be a problem so while as i told you before for medium we will be using minimum of two recipes but in large we will be combining three different recipes at every iteration so if user gives three recipes we will be getting one recipe as an output so let us write the code for large and i let you explain everything now let us write the code for the large recipes so what happens in large recipes as i told you before we will be having a criteria of greater than three and less than three so if it there is if the user gives greater than three ingredients we are going to generate a one code i mean different outputs for else statement of less than three we'll be getting a different output so let us write for the code for greater than three so as it's uh, common let us again instead of the variable and let us give few i mean four recipes so bread butter um, and this time let us include these so uh, like you can see that i have given four uh, ingredients so if if statement should be triggered right so now let us again uh, modify i mean s equals to a dot split of oma so it can convert to an array sorry and as we have the array which contains all the elements now as i told you before in the medium and large we are going to use a concept of combinations so let us again install as a variable called s1 and in this time we are going to write s dot list of combinations combinations of it, it contains two parameters right one is the array 
and the, now in this time we are going to give a fraction of 4 so at every each sample rate the sample rate will be 4 because at every instance we are going to generate 4 different combinations of recipes in the if statement and in the else statement we will be giving in place of 4 as 3 now let us print the values like what are we going to get so let us print s1 As we have 4, we are only going to get the same result, right? Now you can see it got, you got only bread, butter, jam, cheese, like as its length is equal to 4. Now, if we add one more ingredient, so let us write just keep rice. And let us see the output, like I mean different type of combinations that we are going to generate. Yeah, now it, you can see that because of one addition, it generated 4 different, I mean, combination results. So this is how you do that now let us again go back to the picture i mean the code I mean, the way we are going to do now now as it's same as medium for i in s1 and but this time while we are writing the code for query we will be writing query equals to base plus but Please uh, like we note that if it, when you are dealing with combinations, you are only going to get results of tuples. So make sure you convert each, I mean access each element as an individual, I mean character. So I of 0 will, will trigger bread and I of 1 will have butter and I of 2 will be have jam and cheese and the I of 3. So we are going to get I of 0 plus and let us again keep an AND. Or let us keep a comma and let us for every two elements let us keep and so it will be good. So I have 0 and 1. Now let us keep and. And I have 2. And let us again keep and comma. And let us again keep I have 3. So you can see that like we in the query we are going to have base plus 4 different uh, ingredients. Now as it's easy let us go to search the so search will will pass this result to search and basically we are going to have query here and let us install as a variable called res which holds the output now let us print res so let us print now you can see that you got the output so you got different outputs right but this is for if length of the i mean if the number of ingredients are greater than three now let us write the code for if the ingredients are less than three so let us write simply as else statement and let us copy the same so that we can just change the four to three but and also in the query statement right so s1 will have now three and it is going to generate three different combinations and now let us remove one here so uh, yeah that's it now if you print res learn to see the output. now you can see that you got different outputs again right now as a whole let us convert this whole uh, i mean distinct to a function and in that function we are going to again keep two if and else statements so let us keep def large in def large let us pass query and let us first copy the code which contains greater than 3 you can see that let us write for this it just change a i mean let us a equals to q easy for the modify this is for the if statement so where are we going to keep the if statement is the crucial so here so because if you keep it here it again causes an error so if you keep in this place and let us write the i mean condition as length of s greater than 3 also automatically you'll be going to get a 4 a minimum of 4 and now in else statement let us uh, copy the code which you wrote for the else statement and you can see that there is no need of writing code every time for a, a and split because it is same for the both the functions right so 
now this is the whole function now let us uh, call the function oh sorry i forgot to keep the hyphen now let us yeah pick one now let us pass some variable large let us pass a query to the large with the output As we have used before, let us copy the same. Paste it. Let us see the output. You can see that it gives the it gave the output of different uh, recipes. So this is why this is why this is what we are going to do in the like in the application logic and here hence the application logic. Now let us convert this whole thing to views.pv and render the text in the output so let us go to the views.py now let us use the code that we have wrote before so starting by importing the modules to the search function so you can see that i have imported the modules that are required and the base text that i have told you before and this is the search query that we are going to use so let us uh, close this and end this index so before jumping to the main code, the small, medium and large, there are few modifications in the index.html. So as we are dealing with a website, we need some buttons, right? So we, to know whether user wants a small recipe, large recipe or medium recipe, user should trigger any button, right? So there is a concept called checkbox. And what is a checkbox? Checkbox is like on and off button. It works like a switch that we use in our daily life. So basically initially all the buttons that we are going to keep will be in will be in off state so whenever we include i mean if we click on that it will be converting to an off on state so let us write the code for it by keeping few buttons and by using a form so i'll, I'll show you what are the steps that we are going to do for getting a request so after after generating the buttons we need to set, like i mean html should send a request to the views that it the function has been i mean i mean it called it like i mean is called or not right so let us start by writing the code for it i will walk you through the and i mean the html code that we have wrote now so let us start by seeing this bootstrap so we will be using bootstrap so that we are going to i mean uh, in give the href for the bootstrap that we are going to use such as fonts and everything now you can see that i have created a navigation bar see as we are dealing with a website it is good to have a navigation bar so you can find this code in the bootstrap.com so in the bootstrap if you go and you can get the you can easily get the code for the html that we are going to do so in this navigation bar i'm just gave that home so that you, it good it looks good now after that you can see I have created a form so to keep the I mean different types of buttons in a place I have created a class called container so the class container helps us to keep all the uh, buttons in one place so after that I have used a form so uh, in the form you can as we get as a daily form you can fill many forms like your name place and everything so in this case we are going to act as a form which contains the text i mean check box so whenever a user clicks it says that you want that bo i mean you want that particular operation to be triggered so there will be a syntax so that whenever if user clicks on a button it is going to give the request to the url start py so that basically we are going to use action and f so I'm going to create a function called chef which contains the, I mean, the combinations of small, large and medium functions that we have wrote before and the method that we are going to use is known as post method. So we are going to send the request through post method. Actually there are two different types of method post and get. So in place of get what happens is the user user data will be passed through the URL of the website which is not secure right. So that's the reason I'm going to use POST. So what POST does is it, it uses CRSF token. So this is, should be noted. It sends us, acts as an authentication. So whenever user sends some request to the user to, to the server to get some data or fetch some data, CRS token helps us to get or fetch the data from the website. So after that, let us, I have created a text area. So user should write the 
input right so that's the reason i've created a text area and you can see i've created a name called text so name text is used because so while we are creating a form we need to fetch the data so if we have multiple forms we need to name the particular form with a name so it works as an to identification mark for this text area so while we are writing in views.py where we can just use dot text to get the data which has been written by the user in the html file so i just wrote that enter the ingredients will will suggest you the top recipes so this is what i wrote for the text area where the input will be given now later this is a this block of code helps us to create a checkbox so this is known as checkbox so it can be on and off as i told you before for text area as we have a name so we should also have name for the checkbox right so if user clicks on small and click recipes the request which have been sent by crsf token using post method will contain a method called as small so inside the chef function that we are going to write we are going to show small as a sub function so I, I have just replicated the small function i mean the small block of code for large medium small large medium so for medium i kept the name as mbd and for large recipes i gave large so finally i have given a submit button so whenever user clicks clicks on it the data which have been triggered will be sent to the user so let us just load the server so let us run the server by writing python h.py server so if you run the server let us see the static html it's not a dynamic right because the buttons are not yet triggered so let us open the website and see the output you can see the output so in the navigation bar i have given the title as chef at the home as a sample button and the interesting thing that should be noted is this checkbox so whenever if you click it shows as a blue and that means it is an on state and if you if you keep it off state it is it's in white color so you can keep any one or you can keep any it's like your wish you can keep any of the button and this is what the text area that you have created before to enter the text so you can write any text like anything yeah but if you click the submit button it doesn't work because we didn't create the function so that is the reason you can see a page not because we didn't give an created any html file to display the output so now let us write the code for the views.py way now let us go to the views.py way and write the function chef so the reason i am saying chef is i have created uh, the form by using I mean, I, I named the function as chef here. So let us follow the same. So first let us write the chef. And here, here you can see that I've created four variables. The reason I've created these variables are by to get the text from the user. So as I told you again before, it, each form has its own name. So for small and quick recipes, I named it as small. So I wrote here small comma off. So that initially it will be on. So if user clicks on it it will be generated as on so here you can get medium as off large as off and text as off so whenever user gives something the text will be triggered and it will be stored in dj text so in r basically we are going to use the split function to the dj text to get the output now the thing is we need to give some if else statements so that whenever small is triggered medium is triggered or large is triggered will be noted so to write that we'll be writing if all equals to equals to on if this is triggered it will be pre it, it will be working so as if now let us uh, i mean let us do a small uh, sample so i am click let us write in brackets like all so as we have wrote the function right now let us i mean um, pick the i mean add the set a chef to the url start page so it's simply path here you should write the chef and v dot sorry chef dot sorry chef and name is equals to chef 
which will basically write the function name dot views so views can directly map the function where it is and let us add the comma at the ending let us save the file oh. let us again run the server and see the changes that we have wrote so whenever if we click that it is going to show us submit i mean small has been clicked so let us run the server and that is the output King or not now let us see the output and by like as i run the server python manage dot pv so you can see the output now you can see the output now let us write small and let us submit you will be getting error but as we are just testing let us see the output so let us close this and you can see that it printed i am clicked small so you can see that this is how the checkbox works so if you have i clicked only small so it gave i am clicked so now let us complete the remaining code by just adding if conditions and let us place the code that we have wrote before so go to the views.py just write the same for everything so if equals to and equals to i mean sorry. so this says that like whenever it's triggered it is going to be perfect operation so there is one more parameter you can see the error right now what is the error we got saying uh, it didn't return any http response object right so what is that basically as we as user requested to give some output but we didn't return any opt output right so there will be a case where user will not select any operations but he wants the output so in that case we need to keep a default output so whenever user asks the i mean whenever user wants to i mean give the output we will be displaying this thing so it basically contains the rules that we need to follow as i explained you before for small recipes we need at least one recipe at least one ingredient and for medium at most three and for large at least three so this is the default error statement if anything got, went wrong we're going to pass this variable to the params so what is params params is basically the thing that we are going to show in the output file so we are going to just pass ps so again we are we need to uh, i mean uh, create a another html file for the for the output so let us finish this views.pv and go to the outputs so i'll i'll copy the code that we have wrote before and i'll me i'll walk you to the code let me walk you to the views.py code so what basically the sample errors like one the error is when user selects in doesn't select any of the option and there is one more error when if user clicks the small recipe and it doesn't give any ingredient or in case of large if user gives only one ingredient and he asks for large recipes that is not possible right so that is the reason i've created three sample variables so whenever these errors are triggered it's going to show the output as this caution for large recipes we need at least three so this variables handles the error and this handles error for the ingredients and it handles the error for the buttons so params will be used to send the request to the i mean at the last we are going to send this as an output to the index.html now the first condition is all equals to on and you can see what the reason i kept aa is greater than one so a is a variable that holds the value so if basically AI has the value where if user gives uh, I mean number of ingredients right so if the value is greater than or equal to one only it will trigger this function or else it is going to trigger the default function which I have gave like caution for small recipes we need at least one that is the way that is the output that we are going to get. so the small will be equal to on and it will basically the same that we have discussed before but the end we are going to just show in a structured way so as i told you we are going to get three results whenever if you give the output so i am keeping a slash and operated because whenever we get the output it will be in a systematic way so at each line we are going to get the result so and again i wrote params so params we are going to again pass the output if this button has been triggered 
Now for the medium, again we have two conditions. We have at most three, but at least greater than two, right? So we need to have a is less than three and a is greater than two. And again, medium should be on, right? So the code same right? because we have wrote the same here also, right? And now let if you see for the large, as I told you, we'll be having if and else condition. So this is for the if condition, the else condition. And the last we'll be having param and uh, the this else statements acts like whenever if we give a uh, recipe less than three so we can see there are few more errors i mean few more else statements this else statements are used for printing the i mean the errors which i've declared before right res1 res2 so at the end of the statement i have kept one line so this is the important line which is going to give the output. So I will be creating a output.html file which acts the, as an output for the whole HTML. So params is the one which will be collected at every button clicked and, and it will be going to send as a request to the user. And I will say one more thing. So what happens if user clicks small and large? In that case I am going to create three variables res1 and res2 and res3 so at every time we are res1 and res2 res3 will be give like i mean it will be in default way right so if on and me i mean if uh, if on for medium and small are triggered i am that's the reason in the params i am adding all the conditions res2 res1 and res3 so at every params of the every clicked button i am concatting this because if two buttons are clicked, I need to show every, everything in one output phase, right? So that is the reason I'm going to do this. Now, let us stop this and let us write the output.html. Now, let us see the output.html. So, at the final output of this, views.py will be a name and the string. So we can we can give anything, but the reason I gave this only is in the output.html we will be creating a container which holds the name and the string. So if you write if you enclose any variable and with double double flower brackets, it will be calling as an DTL language. So we can pass and request the data from the views.py to appear here. So whenever we pass this output and render this. What happens in the output.html is this name and string variables where in the HTML files are there will be replaced with this output of the string which contains the different YouTube URLs. So this is for the YouTube, I mean output.html. So as a whole, I'll, I'll just explain you. This is basically the navigation bar code which I've, which I've pasted from the index.html. And then I've just created again a small container which holds the output. Now let us run the output. I mean, let us run the server by writing python manage.py run server. And let us see the output. Now you can see that this is the final output that we are going to see. So let us give some inputs like carrot, bean, rice. If I give like this, I'll keep small, medium, and large. So what happens? Now in this case, I've triggered all the options, right? So you can see the output now. You can see you, got, you can see that you got three different outputs, like one is for, these are the large recipes, and these are the best quick recipes, and these are the medium recipe. So this is the order that we're going to get. And each thing it gets, like we are going to get the YouTube URL and the ingredients used. So basically this ingredients used is an add-on like what happens is every iteration I have printed the combinations right so I'm just adding that to the URL I'm just concatting that so I'll just show you that it's easy so in the views.py by while we are generating the result I have just concatted with the I mean the ingredients at the each uh, iteration so basically if you see here Thing, uh, this is the out final output for i in range we'll get the s as a search query and you are only get going to store the url at the end of everything we are only going to say that ingredients used will be i of 0 i of 1 and i of 2 as you know that before the array contains tuples and each tuple has its own element so 
as we are using three combinations so we'll be getting a tuple of three elements and we are going to access each element at the each iterate so now let us again see the output now so this is how we get the ingredients used and the youtube urls or the part, part i mean different uh, url i mean different categories now let us go back and let us click only small and large and skip the large recipes now let us see the output now you can see that there is a caution so caution for large recipes you need at least three ingredients so this is what we have done so you can see that you got small and medium so again i you can cross verify that i have didn't give large and it told small and medium and you can see the outputs like this is if we, if we remove small and you will get what now you can see that i've removed small and i've kept medium recipes and large recipes now you can see that it gave the large recipes and caution for small because i didn't triggered and these are the uh, where i mean outputs for the medium recipes so this is what about the chef application the project that we had done using django web application now let us deploy this application in python anywhere so let's get started by deploying this application before deploying our project we need to zip the folder that contains your django project and make it a zip folder and save it in your desktop or in a particular folder so let us create an account here and let us go inside and in my case i am naming the username as the chef so as the websites and the application name is a chef so in case you can do you can keep your own username and email id and after completion of the creating your account i'll meet you you can see a pop-up called a previous and next and click on the end tour and you can see in console here option so click on the bash console and click on the bash you'll be getting a black screen and make sure you open this uh, url that i've shown i'll show you now so this is the uh, documentation given by python Envoy. so you should follow this to get successfully deploy our application and i'll also give this rules and like what are the rules in the readme file so let's start by installing the python in the virtual environment so what basically is python Envoy does is it creates a virtual machine right so in the virtual machine we need to store a create from scratch so basically let us start by creating a virtual environment so in this the python version in my case is 3.7 and make sure you also follow 3.7 for the right deployment process so let us name the deployment uh, i mean the virtual environment as test and after the test is done you can see the i mean uh, the python environment help desk and you can install django and after installing Django, make sure you also install the YouTube search result API that I am going to show now. So let us like wait until this uh, the test environment with Python creating, and after that let us let me install the models that are required for the deployment. Now uh, copy the statement and write me pip install Django, and wait until it installs. After installing the uh, Django, let us install the YouTube search. So this is the, this is the command that we follow: pip install YouTube YouTube search. And after that, uh, we are completed installing all the modules. Now let us go to the dashboard by clicking here. And now you can see the I mean I mean you can see the different types of consoles, files, web. So click on the web now. Now you can see that it shows no web apps right so we will be adding one here so after that let us click next and here django web 2 flask bottle and there are many things but we need to configure manually so and click on the version click on 3.7 and click on next and after this creating the new web app we need to as we have zipped the folder we need to upload here so go to the files option here at the top and upload the file here so click on the upload file and i'll upload my file which i have zipped it so let me show you how to i mean what are the files that i have uploaded this is the file i have uploaded you can see that it's your chef.zip now again go to the web now 
as we have created a test environment click on the virtual and env here and change it to test so it automatically identifies an environment if it is not automatic i mean if you if you created any other test where environment you need to manually write your test environment here and as we are not dealing with any static files leave this now let us go to the wsti so in the code subsection you can see a wsti configuration file so click on this and you will be redirected to a WSGI file. So clear everything and go to the documentation and you can see a text for Django. So this is for Django. Copy this and place it here. And in my case, the username that I'm using is the chef. So, so here the username will be chef and the my site. So my site is basically, I'll show you when as you upload the files you, you, your name your file name should be the same so while you, you can see that i have given the chef.zip so make sure you also name the your app as chef so that it will correctly map it and also rename my site to chef now as we saved here let us go to the bash console that we have created before and in the bash console we will be using the same bash console that we have created before so that it can't request more consoles now you need to unzip the file so what is this zip? i mean the file name in my case it is chef so if you click unzip chef uh, it is it is automatically going to do let us do this again sorry i mean syntax error and my file name is chef And I can see that it successfully zipped the folder. And let us again go to that. I mean, uh, the chef dot files. I again reload the space so that you can see the chef folder here. And go to the chef. And again go to the chef here. And now the thing is, go to the settings dot pay. As I told you in the beginning, uh, we need to change few things here. So the first thing is debug true to so make it to false allowed host to star so that it can automatically detect this server yeah that's it in here ah uh, yeah there is one more change so in the templates as we are using in the local host it can directly map the templates folder but in this case it may be difficult to find the correct folder right so make sure to go to the files again and click on chef and there is a folder called Ch templates right so copy that folder copy the path like from here replace it here now save this file successfully now again go back to the dashboard and this is the web app that we have created so open the web tab now for every successful change better try to reload this so we can get the results quickly so it will apply the changes that we have made until now and make sure you do this WSGI and the virtual env and if you are facing any other issues, please see this documentation, it helps you. And after a successful reload, if you click on this configuration, you can see the website. Now you can see the output, the chef website is live now. And you can also test by giving a sample input. Let us give the garret and let us test the output. And you can see that it gave the correct output. I mean the ingredients that are used and the URL. So Thank you everyone. This is the project of the, the Chef project and make sure you learn everything correctly and all, see the videos for the better understanding. So thank you.